Hello and welcome to another one of my fluff narratives. This time is going to be a combined one, The Fall of Shadowbrink. For those who don't know, this is where the Tyranids first eat the Grey Knights and then Chaos. Now a little disclaimer here. I'm not going to pronounce Chaos Demon's names. They're just freaking crazy. It's like a string of consonants thrown together. So... I'm skipping that. I'm just going to call them Keeper of Secrets or Bloodthirster or whatever. Okay, now we go on to the story. The Fall of Shadowbrink. As Hive Mind Leviathan drifted into the dead zone left by Cryptman's evacuations, the Tyranids found world after world reduced to empty shells. Yet, one planet, the cathedral world of Shadowbrink, still stood defiant. As the hive mind stretched out its mighty tendrils to claim Shadowbrink for its own, it could not know the horrors its hunger was about to unleash. When the order to excavate reached Shadowbrink's rulers, they stood paralyzed with indecision. Their orders from Segmentum Command were clear, and there could be little doubt that Shadowbrink faced the onrushing fury of a sizable tendril of Hive Fleet Leviathan. Yet beneath its swooping Gothic spires and macro mausolea, Shadowbrink's capital city of Rosoff concealed a terrible secret. In a vast sepulchre, Buried deep within the city's streets, there lurked a ring of obscene archaeotech dating back to the Dark Age of Technology. Upon its discovery by Inquisitional acolytes some three decades earlier, the foul relic had been christened the Maelstrom Cradle, emitting a steady, steadily strengthening warp signature and fluctuating patterns of empiric overbleed, this evil device had resisted all efforts at destruction. Thus, a permanent garrison of Grey Knights had been assigned to stand century over it, performing daily rituals of warding while their librarians worked to permanently seal the potential demonic rift. With the onset of High Fleet Leviathan, it appeared the Grey Knights had run out of time, yet their leader, Brother Librarian Khaldun, could not permit excavation, evacuation, while there was a chance the rift might burst asunder. Were demons allowed to spill into Shadowbrink, there was a very real chance that the Imperium would be faced with a major demonic incursion on top of the woes of attempting to battle High Fleet Leviathan. This was a threat Imperial forces could ill afford. Employing his authority, Caldelan instructed Shadowbrink's governor to refuse the order to evacuate. His people instead, commanding that the defenses be readied to repulse the approaching Tyranids. Shadowbrink was an important world. Its populous cities replete with ancient and priceless relics. As such, it did not stand helpless before the Leviathan. Alongside the planet's civil defense forces, the Fraternus Militia were two full regiments of Cadian infantry and other Vostrophian armor, not to mention the small but deadly force of Grey Knights, led by Caldelan himself. In orbit, Shadowbrink was watched over by three mighty orbital defense platforms, bristling with lance and torpedo batteries, and an attendant squadron of no less than six Cobra-class Imperial destroyers. Yet... As the planet's deep space scanners began to fill with an ever-increasing blizzard of blood-red contact icons, it became apparent 
that such a force would not be anything like enough to weather the oncoming storm. To their credit, Shadowbrink's orbital defenses survived over three hours before being overwhelmed. Yet soon enough, the Cobras and orbital platforms were reduced to empty hulks, their frantic defenders butchered by vast waves of crones, harpies, and spore-borne tyrannid war beasts. As the skies darkened above Shadowbrink and the mind-curdling shadow of the warp cocooned it in horror, billions of tyrannid organisms descended upon the stricken planet. Tides of mindless organisms overran the imperial trench lines, the hive mind spending the lives of its minions at the merciless rate to ensure the planet's prey a swift demise. Valiant guardsmen stood shoulder to shoulder until the last, yet none could withstand the onslaught. All across Shadowbrink, in every major settlement and city, the same scene was repeated, and outmatched defenders vanished, screaming beneath heaving tides of claws and fangs. At the last, as the numberless tyrannid hordes spilled into the vault holding the maelstrom cradle, Caldaloon and his handful of followers strode to meet them. A pair of nemesis dread knights led the charge, vast blades hewing Xenos monsters apart in droves. Yet even these noble champions could not survive forever against the swarm. One by one, Caldaloon's brethren fell, their defiant war cries replaced by a shrieking crunching as the Grey Knight corpses were hurriedly devoured. Yet, as the Tyranids swept from the vault to begin their consumption of the slaughtered world, they were oblivious to the sulfurous ruins beginning to smolder on the Maelstrom Cradle's flanks. From the Maelstrom's Heart Mere hours after Caldaloon's hopeless charge, the fate that the Grey Knights had striven to avoid came to pass. Gorged on the spilled souls of millions of dead humans, the maelstrom cradle roared violently to life. Crackling corpus and danced around the vault, and the villainous, migraine-hued light of nightmares blazed from the heart of the maelstrom cradle. Amid the cacophonous gibbering and inhuman shrieks of anticipation, demonic legions boiled from the widening rift, coalescing from thin air like hideous animate tumors. A vast tide of warp fiends spilled up through the tunnels and catacombs beneath Rosrov city to erupt into its corpse-choked streets. Wading through the tide of lesser beings came a mighty warlord of each chaos god. The bloodthirster roared Korn's praises as the great unclean one lumbered forth alongside him, chuckling in a wet, rumbling baritone. Slipping more cautiously through the rift, a lord of change watched keenly as its old rival, the keeple of secrets loped ahead in search for adoring victims to slay. This cabal of mighty demons, known in imperial demon lore as the Quadraform Abominatum, had brought low a myriad of worlds during the Imperium's 10,000 years and had set their sights upon Shadowbrink as their latest twisted conquest. Yet it took only moments for the lords of the incursion to sense that something was very much amiss. The Wrath of the Warp As the demonic horde 
ran amok through Rasov. Their momentum faltered. Where they had expected cowering mortals upon which to feast, they found only a charnel house of piled corpses with which writhed with gnawing rippers. The buildings were tumbled ruins, and the city was smothered by a blanket of muffling psychic static that caused the demons to flicker and fade. Casting their otherworldly perceptions across Shadowbrink, the demon lord's confusion turned to outrage as the seething tide of aliens that choked the surface and skies. These creatures had no souls to corrupt, manipulate, or twist. They could no more be led into damnation than a lump of rock. Yet the Tyranids, mere presence, was a challenge that the demons could not ignore. And if the demonic legions must first exterminate these proliferate vermin before turning their attentions to the Imperium, then so be it. With thousands more demonic foot soldiers pouring from the Maelstrom Cradle every minute, the Abominatum prepared to unleash their minions upon the Tyranid swarms and scour them from the face of Shadowbrink. Warp energy flared forth in roaring waves, causing the very stones of Rossov and the flesh of its fallen to writhe. As reality convulsed, an insane citadel rose into being, a fitting seat of power from which the Abominatum would prosecute their war of extermination. Slaughter on the Plains until this point, the hive mind had utterly ignored the emergent demon forces. While it recognized that a psychic disturbance of some magnitude was occurring on the planet's northern landmass, the gasalt consciousness of the Tyranid swarm detected neither fresh biomass nor a direct challenge from this strange phenomenon, and deemed it irrelevant. However, this bizarre instinctive standoff was not to last, for the minions of the dark gods revel in the destruction they can wreak in the material realm. Millions, millions of demons poured from the gates of the impossible fortress that rose from the grave of Rossov. Thundering blood crushers and trilling fiends crashed into grazing swarms of tyranid organisms, hacking left and right with gleeful abandon. Plague bearers and nurglings spilled across Shadowbrink's northern plains in a tide of shambling foulness, their mere touch poisoning the biosphere upon which the hive mind fed. Clanking, bellowing soul grinders tore down towering spore chimneys, trampling them with petulant ferocity, while pink horrors capered amid the digestion pools, transmuting the rich vitrolic acids within to kaleidoscopic flame. The hive mind responded like a wounded animal its feeder organisms recoiling frantically from this strange new foe as clouds of spores spat from the bellies of orbiting bioships. Yet even the sky above Rossov was now rebelling at the otherworldly incursion, shuddering between the grim reality of the blotted stars and the roiling vista of racing bloodshot storm clouds. As the spores plunged through this twisted stormscape, they were ravaged by demonic energies, exploding into sparkling rains of cinder and ash. Those that made planet fall struck as ossified orbs that shattered on impact or burst open to spill tides of rank, malformed foulness that mewled and 
twitched even as they writhed with corpulent maggots. The sodden agroplanes around Rossov had been transformed by the Tyranids into a twisted nightmare of fleshy tendrils and sizzling sludge. Now, thundering across this tortured landscape, came a vast herd of Tyranid beasts. Hormigants, Tormigants, and Ravners raced ahead of hulking Carnifexes and Tyranid warriors. Yet the Tyranid land offensive met with little more success than had their attack from orbit. As the Tyranids closed upon the demon's vanguard, the roiling clouds above split open with a scream like a billion tortured souls, and a rain of bile and blood began to fall. Greasy, demonic ichor turned the mud of the plains to dilute muck that bogged down the Tyranid forces. Flaming demon chariots swooped down upon the struggling flows as the Tyranids slithered amongst the mid the puddles of pus. They were scoured by magical flames, hundreds of warrior organisms dying in minutes as their flesh bubbled and vaporized. Flocks of shrieking furies harried the Tyranid from above, dodging and weaving around the goblets of hissing bioacid as the Tyranids continued to press forward in their millions, clamoring over their own half-submerged dead amid the worsening deluge. The thrum of fetid wings filled the air. A great swarm of plague drones descended upon the struggling Tyranids, stabbing and slashing to tear heads from shoulders and shattered chitlinous carapaces. Demonettes danced feather light across the surface of the mire, weaving aside from frantically slashing talons as they gloried in the abundance of writhing, desperate flesh. A, lovering, a lumbering wave of horospexes pressed into the mayhem. Their serrated gullets spat forth to snare demons and drag them whole into their maws, only to find the strange flesh rebelling within them, bursting the biohorror's guts open like rotten seed pods. The tide turns. Even as the masters of the demonic horde strode forth to join the battle, so the hive mind was adapting. Now it viewed the rampant demons not as prey, but as a rival predator endangering their food source. The Tyranids' efforts were redoubled and they raced to devour Shadowbrink's biomass before it could be spoiled. As vast tides of rippers scoured the planet's southern and equatorial regions, the hive mind threw every war beast it had against the warp spawn. This new enemy could reshape the rules of reality and were as deadly at close quarters as the Tyranids themselves. Thus, the hive mind dispatched swarms of exocrines and biovores to form a vast cordon that ringed the emergent demonic forces. As one, this apocalyptic living artillery battery tensed and unleashed a barrage of unimaginable scale on the foe. Crackling orbs of bioplasmic energy rained down upon the demons, annihilating them in their thousands. Clouds of spore mines drifted through the downpour, detonating in clouds of whizzing bone and shrapnel. The demonic offensive faltered, and the hive mind pushed scores of turvagons to the fore. For hour after hour, waves of fresh termagants spilled from the bloated bodies of their broodmothers, hunkering down amidst the churned muck of Shadowbrink's plains. 
to rain volley after volley of flesh borer beetles upon the faltering demons. The great unclean one of Nurgle attempted to break the deadlock and push through the ty Tyranid cordon. Yet, even as the ponderous mountain of filth marshaled his psychic energies, they were smothered by the shadow in the warp. Mo moments later, the huge demon was blown apart in a catastrophic deluge of foul viscera as broods of hovering zoanthropes, striking with uncanny coordination, pierced his bloated hide with a barrage of searing psychic blasts. With one of their number fallen, the remaining lords of the Abominatum realized the nature of the battle had changed. The hive mind was leeching their enemy energies, severing the demons from the sustaining powers of the Empyrean. No real blood flowed for the corn, just worthless alien ichor. As each rancid disease was unleashed by the children of Nurgle, so the next brood of Tyranids had grown resistant to it. Without the fear or devotion of true mortals to sustain them, the demons were floundering fast. As hours turned to days, without relief from the successive waves of Tyranids, the demonic numbers thinned as they lost their grip upon reality. The Lord of Change blasted its way back to the shattered heart of what was left of Rossov City, and made it good its escape through the flickering maelstrom cradle. The two remaining greater demons led a final mad charge to break the Tyranids' line, turning all of their boundless ire upon the creatures before them. Yet the hive mind, having absorbed its foe's strategies, predicted their attack. Even as the bloodthirster and keeper of secrets pounded forward at the head of 10,000 minions, a mighty swarm of Tyrannofexes and Trigons surged to meet them. As one, bio round after another, slammed into their corrupted flesh, the demonic lines collapsed. With sudden and abrupt fury, the maelstrom cradle imploded upon itself, and the demonic citadel collapsing within a thunderous, sucking roar. The blood surster was the last demon dragged back into the warp. Its unholy form was still wrestling furiously with three monstrous trigons as it was wrenched from the mortal plane. The creature's bellow of fury faded slowly into silence. On Shadowbrink, the hive mind had won a mighty victory against the legions of chaos. Yet even as the Tyranids returned their attentions to devouring the ruined world, in the twisted realm of the warp, malevolent intelligences smoldered with fury and plotted their revenge. And that is the Battle of Shadowbrink and how the hive mind deals with chaos. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to my next video. Thank you.